Almighty God, Allah, it has been through your continued and divine grace and mercy that Chaplain Akbari has been prepared to serve many others, both at home and abroad. We pray that you will continue to direct and guide his steps and keep him on your straight path and give him the strength to continue carrying out your will for him. Each and all of these things we pray in your divine and holy name. Amen. Yes, family, friends, I am humbled to stand here before you to say a few words about my chapel, my battle buddy, my friend. And I say that endearingly, Lieutenant Colonel Promotable, soon to be Colonel Ackerman. As a retiree, it has been a long time since I've had the opportunity to speak in front of such a distinguished audience. I ask that you please be patient and forgive any protocols I may destroy. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you out there who know Chaplain Ackery are aware he has a special way of making his presence known. We first met in 2003 at Fort Bliss, Texas. I was the command sergeant major assigned to the 31st Combat Support Hospital, which was preparing to deploy to Iraq for OIF-2 in 2004 to 2005. One evening, while working in my office, this captain steps in my doorway and says, Sergeant Major, how's your family? My first thought was, who are you? <laughs> and why are you asking about my family? <laughs> Once deciding not to call the military police and have them escorted to the seventh floor of William Beaumont, assuming he must have escaped, we began to talk. He then introduced himself as the unit's chaplain who would be joining us on deployment. I then thought, great. <laughs> <laughs> However, to my pleasant surprise, Chaplain Agri was the right man for the right job with the right unit at the right time. No. While all you may know, being deployed is stressful. Preparing to, de to deploy produces stresses all of a different nature. I watched as my chaplain, I'm playing them now, <laughs> counsel, minister, he provided spiritual and moral guidance to soldiers both junior and senior from all walks of life and religions. There is no doubt his leadership helped prepare the unit mentally, physically, and spiritually for the challenging year ahead. <clears throat> Once deployed, our hospitals was our unit was responsible for hospitals in Balad, which was Ivan Cena, and the hospital in well, hospital in the Green Zone, which was Ivan Cena, and the hospital in Balad. Some of you may be familiar with those areas. Throughout that year, Chaplain Agri went about his duties tirelessly both day and night, taking care of the unit, always sharing steadfast guidance and counsel, some of which I had the pleasure of receiving. Thank you, sir. Because the 31st was the Walter Reed of the war zone, we not only cared for our soldiers, we provided medical care for some Iraqi civilians, and we provided, and for a period of time, we had a de detainee ward. Chaplain Aubrey assigned to us was a blessing in disguise. Because of his special skill set, for those of you who aren't aware, the chaplain, or my chaplain, can speak at least seven different languages, and maybe even more, and speak them fluently. We had our own interpreter, which paid big dividends. As I mentioned, my chaplain was my battle buddy. And at times, the chaplain would accompany me on convoys to see our soldiers tasked at different locations. During those times, I felt extremely safe. <laughs> Safer than having a 50 cal on my Humvee. On on <laughs> times when he could not go, part of our pre-combat check was to have him say a few words before leaving, which provided comfort and strength to me and my soldiers. Now I know this because on one mission, I must have been rushing. I was rushing to make movement when my driver said, Sergeant Major, don't forget about the chapel. So we paused. On another occasion, I truly believe because of my chaplain, I'm standing here today. 
I think it was a Friday. See, Fridays typically were worship days and relatively quiet. Not having any meetings or convoys, I asked my bud, my battle buddy, to accompany me to the market. That was our way of taking a break, if just for a few minutes. At the market, see, the chaplain ensured we did not get overcharged for our Rolex watches. <laughs> because we spoke the language. <laughs> well, that morning, the chaplain did have something to do, so he said we should go in the afternoon, which I agreed. Within an hour of us changing our time, there was an explosion that rattled the windows of the hospital. Just blocks away at the market, a suicide bomber set off a bomb sending the hospital into mass casualty mode to receive patients who were severely wounded. <coughs> to this day, I am sure my chaplain's divine intervi intervention or schedule change kept us both safe. <laughs> Lastly, Chaplain Aubrey, my friend, it's been well over 10 years since we've served together. However, we managed to stay in touch over time I feel as though it was just yesterday when we speak. We have, or we had, a plan. Once he retires, I will visit Ghana. <laughs> but thanks to the Secretary of Army reposing special trust and confidence, <laughs> I guess I will have to put that plan on hold for another three or four years. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. <laughs> Several months ago, I was watching the news one evening and caught just a glimpse of him on TV. There he was, standing behind the President of the United States at a religious recognition ceremony at the White House. I immediately jumped up and shouted, that's my chaplain. <laughs> at that point, I thought my wife was going to call San Antonio police and have me taken to the 4 4 Bams Club, Army Medical Center. <laughs> to ensure I wasn't crazy, I took a picture of the TV screen and I emailed it to chaplain. I emailed it so he could confirm that was him, and it was. <laughs> when I received the news, that his time had finally come and he would be promoted to colonel. I knew I had to be there along with his family, his friends, to witness the promotion of an outstanding soldier, officer, husband, father, and friend. Chaplain, you serve as a leader, a mentor, a role model for all the enemy. He never boasts, he never brags, he lets his accomplishments define him. Sir, it has been a great honor and privilege for me to have served with you and be able to call you my chaplain, my battle buddy, and most of all, my friend. Thank you for allowing me to share just a few thoughts on your special day of your impact on my life. Congratulations to you and your family on your well-deserved promotion and successful career, and may you continue to be blessed. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Paul. Good morning. May 1997. And now I know you say you go Army, the Navy. But let me tell you where it all begins. <laughs> <laughs> Young fella came to a ship called the United States Ship Gary. When he came to the ship, Everybody knew there was something different about this man. What manner of man is this? Knowing that he didn't belong to the Navy. Because the Navy at the time wouldn't accept Chaplin who was a, a citizen of the United States. But through the efforts of many others, um, I'd like to say I'd like to take part in that also knew that there was something different about him and we had to do something to help him out. Um, being on board the ship, he was well respected. Well respected. From his peers to the commanding officer of the ship. Just want to give you a few surprises. This was a man well beyond his years. Well beyond his years. 
I'm going to read a few things to you, and I just want you to soak them in. And I'll wrap it up for you. I consider it both an honor and a privilege to be offered this rare opportunity to say a word or two <coughs> on the occasion. <laughs> he was humble and he was on a mission. He said, Captain, I deem this occasion important by virtue of the fact that it reflects on two chapters of his military and professional life. He was educated and he was a leader. He said, Captain, one important area of my mission as a Muslim chaplain is education. Islam, and for that matter, Muslims have either been misunderstood or misconceived on Euro-American societies from time immemorial. He also said, I'm happiest, I'm the happiest man at this moment because he was leaving the Gary. He was leaving the Gary, the USS Gary, a Navy ship, in a better position than when he first came aboard. He recognized his friends, his peers, and his leadership. And then he went on to say, before I resume my position, Captain, I'd like to share a word of advice with shipmates especially the young women out there. He went on to say, let us take our jobs seriously. Let us explore any academic or professional opportunity that comes our way and the rest will account for itself. The beginning is always hard, but the future benefit is worth the little sacrifice we make today. <laughs> you might be the next guy to deliver a speaker <coughs> next time around. Ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you, people will forget what you say. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. Now what I just read for you were excerpts from a speech from an E3 senior in the United States Navy on his day of commission that I've kept for all these years. <laughs> Didn't know I had it. <laughs> and I'm here today to tell you, to tell him how you made me feel for all these years. Thank you for your service, your continued service. Thank you for your love of humanity. Thank you for who you are. Beyond that, he may tell you stories of you know, his last day in the Navy <laughs> as he boarded a plane to head on to do greater things. What I remember is a friend that was leaving the Navy to do bigger and better things. And that particular day, he was commissioned on a Friday, but the very next day, Saturday, May of 1997, the San Diego Union Tribune did a story and an article on this young man. And to this day, I've kept it. <laughs> I just want to make sure that he had it. And I want you all to know my public confession that I love this man and for all that he does, all that he is and all he is to become. Thank you. Special music will be presented by Miss Agbury, Miss Moata Pari Agbury.
The President of the United States has reposed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities of Chaplain Lieutenant Colonel Dawood Agbury. In view of these special qualities and his demonstrated potential for increased responsibility, he is therefore promoted in the United States Army to the rank of Colonel, effective 3 December 2018, by order of the Secretary of the Army. And Tilata Agberry will now replace the president. your name? I, I would I bear it. Having been appointed an officer in the United States Army. Having been appointed an officer in the United States Army. In the rank of Colonel. I love it. 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 The Lord of Mercy, the Giver of Mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for honoring me and my family <coughs> with your presence here this morning. First, I want to recognize my childhood friend, Salis Ninja. Salis, please stand to be recognized. <laughs> thank you to this country. To be specific, to be specific, that of October 29, 1995. He picked me up from the airport. It was cold as hell. It feels like in the in the freezer. <laughs> and he took me home. And for the next six months, he provided me accommodation, he provided me food. He even made shopping, dressing shopping for me so I can deal with the cold. I paid nothing for the next six months. And a lot of the immigrants you see in this country, <coughs> if they succeeded, is probably when they started. If they have something like <coughs> to take care of them, then they go on to become what they can become. But if it did not start well, and it starts struggling from the beginning because nobody was there to provide them the cushion, then they feel. So I'm here because of Sal's teacher, because of what he did. I would like to recognize uh, the members of my family. Uh, you see, uh, I have not done a lot of this before. Uh, you know, this flower team. It's new, uh, <laughs> but I think uh, for the first time we can also do this one. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you all for everything you do. Um, for my for my kids, all I want to tell you, you heard my story. And you realize I didn't get here without the help of other people. What I expect of you is that one day somebody will stand and speak about you that you were the shoulders that got them where they got. So I want you one day to also do your best to lift somebody forward just like somebody lifted me. Uh, 
poem. Thank you very much. Uh, Colonel Retard, Imam Abdul Rashid Muhammad, United States Army, and the playing of the Army song. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa al-Asr. Inna al-Insan al-Afi al-Husr. Illa al-Ladina amanu wa aminu salihat wa tawassaw bil-Haq wa tawassaw bil-Sab. With God's name, the most gracious, the most merciful. By the stages or passing of time, surely man is in a state of loss. Except for those who have faith and do good and thereafter exhort to truth and righteousness. O creator of the heavens and the earth, we conclude this ceremony. I pray that your continued blessings go with Chaplain Agberry and his family and that, they, and that you will continue to watch over them regardless of where destiny may take them. March along, sing a song with the army of the free. Count the brave, count the true, who have fought to victory. We're the army and proud of our name. We're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might. And the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have done, fighting till the battle's won. And the army goes rolling along. And it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way. Down off the gate is loud and strong. For there we go, you will always know that the army goes rolling along. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Please come forward and extend your congratulations to Captain Larry. اللهم وفقنا لهداك واجعل عملنا في رضاك اللهم هذا الدعاء هو منك الإجابة اللهم هذا الجود وعليك التقلان اللهم اشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا وعافي موتلانا وفك أسرانا واجبر كسرانا اللهم طهر المسجد الأقصى من اليهود الغاصبين وأخرجهم منهم عذلة صاغرين اللهم منصر إخواننا المجاهدين في سبيلك في كل مكان اللهم انصرهم على عضوك عضوهم اللهم إنهم هفاة فاهملهم وأراة فاغصهم وجياء فأشبعهم ومساقن فارأمهم يا رهيم المساقين ويا ناصر المستضعفين اللهم عليك لكل أبو للإسلام والمسلمين اللهم افتح لنا فتحا مدينا واهدنا صراطا مستقيما وانصرنا نصرا عزيزا وأتم علينا نعمتك وأتم علينا نعمتك وأنذل في قلوبنا السقينتك وانشر علينا وانشر علينا فضلك وانشر علينا فضلك ورحمتك اللهم